not who you think I am. There you go. See? I scared you just a little bit. But, unfortunately, you got my voice instead of Jacob Balks because he, right now, is in Viva Las Vegas. But, of course, you have me, and also you have my dear friend Joe Ardita, and you'll hear from Eleanor Chompy a little bit later. Joe, what is going on? It was weird to he- not hear Jacob's hello New York call, like screaming into the mic like he does every Tuesday at 5 p.m. But nah, it's all good. It's actually going to be my last beyond the game. Is it? Yeah, because of uh, scheduling issues with just work and my internship. So I had to talk to Jacob about it, and you know we're on good terms with it. So, Well, you know. I, I, I can tell you this. From the short time that I have known you, I can tell you that from when I known you, you grew dramatically. You do a very great job. Thank you. You always have a friend in me, definitely. And you know what? All the best to you. Thank that, you. I that's appreciate it, honestly, man. that's really all I can say because you know what? I'm pretty sure that you love what you do here. You love talking sports. You're very knowledgeable. You always come with like a doctorate thesis, whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. And all I can tell you, Joe, make it count. Absolutely. That is all I'm going to tell you. Like basically, right now you're in the home stretch, but that's okay because I can tell you right now. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, Eric. Very much. So let's go to something that we don't really start with. Now, obviously, we have more Yankee fans in the room than Mets fans. But I genuinely wanted to start with the Mets for this specific reason. Now, although this is bad news for Sandy Alderson in himself, it's technically good news for the Mets. Sandy Alderson is taking a leave of absence because of his health. Now, obviously, uh, you and I, Joe, your mother, my mother, can basically tell you that the Mets are in an absolute free fall right now. Mm -hmm. Who do you blame? Who do you blame? Is this on Callaway? Is this on Alderson? Is this on the Wilpons? Is this on injuries? What do you blame this on? I mean, ultimately, I think over the years, you can put it on the Wilpons because the way I see it as a Yankee fan, looking from the outside, you know, looking at the Mets, it seems like that the the Mets are not really going to get better until the Wilpons sell the team because they don't seem capable or competent of running a baseball team or maybe they just want to make money because it doesn't seem like they're doing what needs to be done to make their team successful and to put a you know a capable baseball team a competitive product on the field (laughs) that people are going to want to show up and see like people happen to forget that the Mets had almost won a couple years ago in 2015 one thing that they did was making a big splash and getting Cespedes at the trade down line that was huge which is something that they needed to do and if and if you remember that year I'm talking to all you Mets fans before the trade deadline do you remember who the cleanup hitter was do you remember no John Mayberry Jr. Mm. Does that name sound a little familiar to you? And what happened after the trade deadline? Yoannis Cespedes comes to the New York Mets. An absolute great move for Alderson. Now, Alderson has made that move, which is outstanding. I'm pretty sure the list is too long about the moves that he has missed. But yeah, to answer your question, I think... I wouldn't put too much blame on Mickey Callaway. I don't I really know. Blame any of it on I Callaway. really don't know what else he's supposed to do. It's like you know when they kicked Terry out of here a couple of years ago. Like he really was kind of best doing. The, yeah, right. You know he was doing the best with what he had. A manager is only capable of doing so much. You can't make the players play for you and play exactly that the way you want him to. I think Alderson. Yeah, I mean you know he kind of just sat around and waited for things to happen that were never going to happen. And I think. You know, unfortunately, with his you know leave of absence, it's not you know something you look at. It's like, oh yeah, you know, screw him. Obviously, you you want anybody in good health, but you know, I think the Wilpons and the Aldersons have to take a lot of the blame for what's going on with the Mets in the last couple of years. I completely agree with you, and I also just wanted to point something out. This one is basically to everyone in the room. Eleanor, I know that you're off mic, but I'm pretty sure that you can attest. Um, I'm pretty sure that the New York Mets as an organization is the only team in New York that does not speak to its fans. I'm right. pretty because the, the Yankees Will do Bond it. specifically yeah, like exactly. they just talk through press releases. Exactly. The Yankees do it. Hal Steinbrenner is available at a drop of a dime to basically anybody. The Giants, the Maris, the Tishes, everybody's there. The Jets, Chris Johnson is normally there. Like you hear a lot of right. him because Woody's not in charge. He's in England doing whatever, good for him, but just go to the like the the New York Rangers. They send out a letter to the fans saying, "Look, we're not going anywhere this year. We have to go with the youth movement. This is what's happening." 
the Knicks, as of recently, with Jim Dolan, and because Phil Jackson didn't do anything, right. now Scott Perry is talking to people, Dave Fisdale is talking to people, the Knicks turned it around pretty quickly, even the New York Islanders, the Islanders of all teams, honestly, the Islanders and the Mets are normally very similar, because mm-hmm. sometimes they're so close but so far away, but in this case, the Islanders have a much better management than the Mets do right now, number one, you have a new head in charge, Lou Lamorello, who was very, very outspoken. Gart Snow is not around anymore. Gart Snow didn't really talk to anybody. The only time you heard from Gart Snow is at the end of the year press conference where basically saying what went wrong and what we want to do. And it's always the same stuff every time. Oh, we're, we're obviously looking for a Stanley Cup. We're obviously like, I, I, I don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. I do not want to hear that. Any fan of your team, it does not matter who you are. You want to know what the owners are thinking. Not so the manager, because you see the manager or the coach at at any day. You want to see behind the scenes. Like, do you remember when that whole saga with Carmelo Anthony was going down and Phil Jackson was nowhere to be found? Right. How mad did that make you? It was terrible. It's, like, pathetic and it's unprofessional. And when you're running a team, you know, you should be in interaction with the fans they should you know if they're signing like a big free agent it's not like they need to be like in the know if it's something that's going to benefit the team long term but you know like a team is a brand just like anything else like any artist or athlete or you know whatever actor everything is a brand and you're representing the brand and if you're not really letting people that are in favor of your brand, know what's going on with your brand. It's not a good look for your brand. That was a little wordy, yeah. but you know no, what no, I mean? No, no, no. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> it's because, like pathetic. No, I know exactly what you mean, but I just want to go to the series for the second for the Mets. I really don't know what else to say because Jason Vargas got injured conditioning himself. Mm-hmm. Sandy Alderson's taken a leave of absence. Everybody's hurt. Their season's over. There's no way they're making the playoffs. They're, like even though Are you serious? I d- look, the only reason why I'm not going back on my... Um, prediction that no, the I Mets heard are going to Maggie go- from uh, CNB. I heard them talking the other day, and they they were of course talking about the Mets because it doesn't seem like they talk about the Yankees very much. They never do. I don't know why. I guess they're just not knowledgeable just about New York sports them. and running a radio show. But I had heard like a blip of it, and she was like, "If the Mets playoffs hopes are not already over, like it's very close." And I just wanted How like to close? pull it's- my hair out. I'm like, "It's already over." Like, what do you mean? The faster, <laughs> the faster that you realize that this Mets season is going nowhere, and you might as well just stick, especially if you're like if if you're into fantasy sports, that's the only reason why I can see you continuing watching the Mets, unless you're an absolute diehard. If you're a diehard fan, props to you. One of my best friends who I've known probably since I don't know, maybe since I'm 10 or 11 years old. His name is Mike. And he is so fed up with this Mets team, but he can't stop watching them. (laughs) He's an absolute diehard fan. I give him a ton of credit because City Field is a graveyard right now. No one wants to go. No one wants to see this team lose. The past series, they were overflown by Dodger fans. You know? And, you know, speaking of which, I know we're getting to the Yankees next. The Phillies got, uh, they got shown out the other night. I think it was maybe last night. Um, it was the, it was the one where that kid, the new kid, Jonathan. I don't know his last Low name. Low right, Yeah, he threw Jonathan like Jonathan Lasagna. Right, <laughs> Lasagna, right? And uh, it was the night where they had like fifteen strikeouts. I don't know if it was last night or his last start. Yeah. Okay, but um, the thing is, even with Low Isiga. Uh, he came up from Double A. He did not right. see Triple A. He's showing results. The Mets don't have that. The Mets don't have anybody that you can just bring up and plug in right now. Right. They have this kid Alonso that I really like. He's a first baseman. What do you do with Dominic Smith? I don't know. How about you promote Alonso to AAA if he's not there already? And if he's better than Dominic Smith, put him on the roster. Mm. They're already talking about bringing up Tim Tebow. <laughs> <laughs> How much worse does it need to get? I mean, are you serious? I feel like the Mets are very similar and akin to the Jets at times. I think the Jets have done a little bit better no, no, job recently. I disagree because the Jets are a better organization. They actually talk to people. All right, yeah, you know, you can give them that. But just over the years, like overall, the way the Mets... Mets and the Jets have stayed on levels of complacency and like mediocrity. It's like I find them very similar as organizations. The only thing that the Mets have over the Jets is that they were competitive relatively recently. They were competing for a championship right. in 2015. The Jets have 2009 and 2010, but you know, e- even then, it seems like ancient history right now. Right. It's just like I, I have no, I, I honestly, if I'm a Mets fan, 
I don't know what to do. I'm looking at other teams. I'm I'm basically jealous. I'm so jealous. Why can't my team do that? Because I guarantee you, they expected to compete this year. Maybe not for a World Series, for a wild card. Why would they sign Jay Bruce? Granted, it was a bad contract at the right. time. They had no room. They had Bruce, Conforto, um, uh, well, Ligaris, and Cespedes. Right. Where was he going to play? It, it it was a bad contract. It was probably a bad move to begin with, but at least the familiarity with City Field and the familiarity with the National League, just being competitive, especially uh, the previous year with the Indians when yeah, they traded he him was off, killing him. Yeah, when he season. traded him, when the Mets traded him for a bag of baseballs, he right. was he was doing so great. In he the maybe Indians. felt like he was going to be like a Daniel Murphy two point off to leaving the team. They're like, oh, we want this guy. He back. almost single handedly, him and Frankie Lindor almost killed the Yankees. Yeah, almost. But you know what? I genuinely have nothing else to say. The Mets are an absolute dumpster fire. Do you remember that fire at City Field? It was foreshadowing something. Yeah, the it's, sky is it's, falling. It's in so Citigroup. it's so bad. But now I want to go to the Yankees because for the first time this season, in my opinion, because normally since honestly since they were nine and nine, which seems like ancient history, because they've been killing it recently. Basically, since then they were killing it. I think that there is legitimate reason for concern for the first time this by getting season. Getting swept by the Rays. Not is that only. What you mean? Uh, no, well, not necessarily. Number one is Chase and Shreve. Chase mm-hmm. and Shreve is a specialist that is supposed to get out lefties. Yet he let up first pitch, first hit, walk off home run. To I, f- I forgot who it was, but they ended up getting swept by the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, as much as it bothered a lot of people getting swept by the Tampa Bay Rays, I'm genuinely not concerned about that, and I'm really going to tell you why. Because they are too good of a team to let that happen on a regular basis. Yes, you don't want to get swept by a division rival that is a million times inferior than Mm -hmm. your team. I get that. But... The bats were silent. The offense was silent. The defense was okay. Mm. Giancarlo Stanton's heating up because when the weather gets hot, so do the players. But the offense was not there. Tropicana Field is an absolute joke. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. In the last game, the Yankees Clint probably Frazier. should have won that game and legitimately like got robbed by the stadium. Tropicana Field is just a pathetic place to play, and it, it shouldn't even be a part of baseball. Florida baseball, like Jacob is really right, it just, it's, just, it's just not it in work. a good place right now. They should just remove it from existence permanently. I feel like whenever I'm watching the Yankees play at Tropicana, it's like the most depressing place to play in the MLB. It seems like there's like like a light in the stadium lights. The, 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 it's either dim or out. It always seems like there's a light out in the stadium. Pretty much. And, and there's always Yankee fans like in the stands or like behind home plate and there's only 20,000 people if that there. It doesn't matter who the Rays are playing. You have to realize spring training baseball, teams are everywhere in Florida. Right. They're not just exclusively Rays fans or Marlins fans. Guarantee you there are some. I've never seen one yet, but they're, they're but they do exist. <laughs> Guarantee you, they do exist. The thing that really sticks with me is that last game that you just mentioned. Clint Frazier comes in to pinch hit for Neil Walker, which which is becoming another problem, by the way. But we'll get to that in mm-hmm. a second. Clint Frazier comes up, first pitch hits an absolute missile to the speaker. That's in fair territory. It falls off the speaker. It's an out. What are we doing? Is this backyard wiffle ball? Are yeah, you serious? It makes absolutely no sense. Like th- there either needs to be a rule where that's like offensive interference, and the, you know the count is just considered the what it was before that pitch, or, or call it a foul. Yeah, call it a foul. But Aaron Boone said it right. Aaron, Bo- I, I wish we had an audio. The, the one time that Jacob got all, I really that, got when audio that, from yeah. Aaron Boone, it just it just flows very nice. Aaron Boone said it right to me. He said it is what it is. Because it is. But why have a speaker in fair territory? Why not just move it to foul territory? Right. Does not cost money. Did you see what the Tampa Bay Rays did? They sent a bill to the Yankees. Right. I to thought that pay was so petty, speaker. like an invoice. Yeah. It's just so ridiculous. Like, Tropicana Field is an absolute joke. At least take a dome off it. It's always nice in Florida. You know, disregarding the right. five days out of the week when it rains. But, um, yeah, but then again, a lot of rain outs. But uh, either way, just get the rays on the Marlins out of Florida. It's just not working. Now, I want to go to another problem that the Yankees have genuinely for concern. The, well, the biggest one is Gary Sanchez. Right. It's now, a grade one strain. Yeah, it's a hamstring. Now, I'm... Concerned, but I'm not 